Good morning and welcome to WWDC 2018. Today is all about software. We're gonna get started with iOS. Next big release of iOS is, you guessed it, iOS 12. And because we want these changes to be available to the full range of our customers, iOS 12 will be available on all the same devices as iOS 11. And we're focusing our efforts especially on the oldest devices. This is the iPhone 6 Plus. Now on that device, iOS 12 delivers a number of improvements across common operations. You'll see that apps launch up to 40% faster. The keyboard can come up up to 50% faster, and you can slide to take a photo at up to 70% faster. And in iOS 12, we wanted to make an easy way to experience AR across the system. We created a new file format for AR. It's called USDZ. You can use USDZ across the system, from the Files app to Safari, to even sharing them over messages and mail. And what's great is you can place these 3D objects into the real world. Designers and developers will now be able to use familiar apps, apps that they know and love, like Photoshop or Dimension, to create amazing AR content and bring it easily via USDZ. In fact, for the first time with Creative Cloud and iOS, you will have a what you see is what you get editing in AR. So here I am at the Fender website, and they actually let you configure your guitar with the kind of finish and pick guard that you want. So I can select a configuration option here, and then I can see the guitar I've configured. So I'm just gonna tap in. Of course, I can see the guitar here, but wouldn't it be cool if I could see it in the real world, in its real size? Well, there it is. So we're introducing a new app, and it's called Measure. It makes it really easy to measure objects, detect rectangles and get their dimensions, and measure lines along surfaces. Now, I'm actually in the, the Measure app. You see, I can easily measure along this suitcase by just tapping and dragging out a line like that. And check that out. It's a measurement. And we're on a relentless pace of advancement with AR, and that continues today with AR Kit 2. Now this delivers true multi-user augmented reality. You and the people around you will be able to, able to see your own perspective on a common virtual environment. And to help all you developers get started, we created this sample app written in Swift that you'll all be getting today. Now check out how both players and even a third observer can all experience the same environment in real time. Here we have Assembly Square. It's one of our Lego creator sets. Perfect. Because now, with our Kit 2's multi-user support, we get to play with up to four friends in the same space. This year, we're making photos even better. We have an all new tab. It's called For You. And with For You, you have all of your memories, those great memory movies, but more like featured photos, highlighting a photo that you took on this day in past years. And effects suggestions, for instance, suggesting looping a live photo or applying a new portrait effect to one of your portrait photos. We've added sharing suggestions. So imagine you've gone out for a great dinner with some friends and you took some photos. Well, afterwards and for you, you'll see a suggestion like this to share those photos. If you tap in, you'll see that Photos is even recommending a set of photos that, from that set that you might wanna share and suggest who you might want to share them with, based in part by the people that appeared in the photos. Let's turn to Siri. We wanted to make Siri able to do much more for you. And we're doing that by taking advantage of the power of apps with a new feature we call Shortcuts. Now, say you have the Tile app because you're always losing your keys. Well, the Tile app can expose the option to add a shortcut to Siri. You can assign your own phrase, such as, I lost my keys, would be a good choice. And when you then say it, Siri will automatically activate Tile and show you right in the Siri UI, start ringing your Tile. We wanted to let you create your own shortcuts as users by, of multiple steps across multiple applications. And we're doing it with a new Shortcuts app. We start in the gallery where there's hundreds of pre-made shortcuts that you can download or we can hop over to the library, and I've got a bunch of shortcuts here, but I wanna show you my heading home shortcut. 
you can see that it's just really a series of steps. It grabs my location and my travel time and it sends my ETA to my roommate. It sets my home kit thermostat to 70 degrees and it turns on my fan. And last, it gets directions home with Apple Maps with the best route to avoid traffic. I've already added this shortcut to Siri with the custom phrase heading home. So now, whenever I leave work, I can just say heading home. You will get there in one hour. I sent a message to Cheryl. Your thermostat is set to 70 degrees and I turned on the fan, playing KQED radio. We're bringing Apple news to stocks. The top stories in stocks features business news, right? Curated by the Apple news editors. With iOS 12, we're bringing stocks to iPad. We've also completely rebuilt voice memos to make it even easier to use. And we're bringing voice memos to the iPad for the first time. But we also have a smart and safe way to use your apps in the car. I think you know I'm talking about CarPlay. What you might not know is with iOS 12, CarPlay will also support third-party navigation apps. There, there are times of the day, or times when you just don't want to be disturbed. And one of those, of course, is at night. And so we're introducing Do Not Disturb During Bedtime, where all you'll see is this nothing to get you spun up. But we're enabling what we call instant tuning for notifications right from the lock screen. You can press in to a notification, and from there you can decide to send future notifications from that app directly to Notification Center, bypassing your lock screen, or turn them off altogether. Now, we also wanted to give you help managing large numbers of notifications. So I'm thrilled to announce that we're bringing to iOS support for grouped notifications. Grouped not just by app, but also by topic and thread. It gives you a great overview of the notifications you've received. You can tap in and look at a particular group. But of course, just as important, with a single swipe, you can triage a whole group of notifications away. We wanted to go further. And it's with a feature we call screen time. And it starts with reports. Every week, you get a weekly activity summary that details how you used your iPhone or iPad. You get a summary of the time you're spending in apps, how much time you're spending, how often per hour you're picking up your phone and what's drawing you in, and what apps are sending you the most notifications. An app where you might want to be spending a little bit less time well, you can set your own limit. And then during the day, when you're using the app, you'll receive a helpful notification, letting you know time is almost up. And we think this is gonna be helpful for many people, but especially for some kids. You can also limit uh, your kids' time in apps by category or by individual app. And this year, we're taking Animoji to a whole new level, the breakthrough new technology we call tongue detection. You can make your favorite an emoji do this. <laughs> now, we've also, we're also introducing some great new an emoji that I think you're all gonna love, like ghost, koala, tiger, and T-Rex. So I'm thrilled today to announce the arrival of the era of Memoji. With Memoji, you can create your very own personalized Animoji. These Animoji can look like you or the real you. <laughs> now, this year, FaceTime is going to take a big leap forward because today we're introducing group FaceTime. Two people, three people, actually up to 32 simultaneous participants. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Now check it out. So it's this beautiful FaceTime UI. Next up, we'd like to talk about the Apple Watch. So in watchOS 5, you can challenge any of your activity sharing friends to a seven day competition whenever you would like. Now there's sometimes when you forget to start a workout on watch, but you've started working out, and to solve this now, we're adding automatic workout detection. In watchOS 5, you'll have an entirely new way to communicate on your watch. That's real-time voice, but with the spontaneity of short messaging. And to do this, you just press to talk, and then your friend can hear your voice just like a walkie-talkie. 
And we're also adding Siri shortcuts. Those shortcuts you saw coming to iOS 12 are also going to be available in watchOS. So in addition to getting relevant information, you'll also receive predicted shortcuts right on the Siri watch face. So at a wrist raise, you'll be able to directly do things like turn on your leaving home scene or start an outdoor walk so you no longer need to say, hey Siri. You just raise your wrist and talk to Siri. Today, if someone sends you a web link, you aren't able to view it on your wrist. With watchOS 5, we've integrated WebKit, so now you have the ability to view web content in mail or messages. And now, with watchOS 5, we're giving you even more to listen to. The Apple Podcast app is coming to Apple Watch. Now, this is also Pride Month, and we're really excited to introduce an all-new Pride Edition watch band. Next up is Apple TV. Apple TV 4K is bringing you the latest in audio technology. Dolby Atmos. The Apple TV app now offers a huge range of live sports. And we've added live news. And I'm really excited to announce that here in the US, Charter Spectrum will be coming to Apple TV late this year. That means that up to 50 million homes will be able to choose Apple TV to access all their live channels. Next up is the Mac. Our next release of Mac OS is Mac OS Mojave. And I'd like to show you a new side of Mojave. We call it dark mode. All of the contents of your desktop are automatically arranged into these stacks. And they can be arranged by kind, by date, or even by tag. And we call it desktop stacks. Some great new changes to the Finder. Now we've added an all new view called Gallery View. And of course, with images, sometimes you want to know more detail about, for instance, how they were captured. And now the new sidebar in Mojave really helps because it now supports full metadata. So for instance, if I have a photo like this and I want to edit it, I don't have to open it and go or do a new app. I can rotate it right here inside the Finder. Now in Mojave, we've made Quick Look more powerful than ever, ever by integrating markup. So you see down here, I have a permission slip in a, it's a PDF document. I'm just going to hit tap spacebar to Quick Look it. And you notice now I have the option to invoke markup. I click and now I have access to my markup tools, including my ability to sign this document. We've made screenshots more powerful than ever. I'm gonna screenshot a selection of the page and I want you to watch what happens in the lower right. I get a thumbnail instantly of that screenshot and when I double click in, I get an accelerated workflow right into Markup where I have access to all of my tools. But we've also added screen capture for video. I'd like to turn to apps. We are bringing news to the Mac. We also have stocks coming to the Mac. We're also bringing voice memos to the Mac. Finally, thrilled to announce Home is coming to the Mac as well. All of your accessories here, you can run your scenes as well as monitor your video cameras. And of course, with Siri, you can command your home with your voice. I'd like to talk about security and privacy. Well, we've all seen these these like buttons and share buttons, and these comment fields. Well, it turns out these can be used to track you, whether you click on them or not. And so this year, we are shutting that down. You wanna interact with one of these or one of these apps tries to access that information? You'll get this, and you can decide to keep your information private. So we've redesigned an all new Mac App Store from the ground up. Microsoft will bring Office 365 to the Mac App Store later this year. And Adobe is bringing Lightroom CC. Days like this only come from years of effort and hard work and great sacrifice. Let's have an incredible week together. Thank you. We've worked hard to build a deep set of customization options to let our customers create an incredibly diverse set of Memoji.